I'm going to talk about uh, rainforest conservation, which is a course that we run um, as part of this Masters. And I teach this with Margie Mayfield and Rod Fencham and Pat Ward. And the, the biologists in that team are all plant biologists. How good's that? How good's that? Have we heard anything about a plant? Except for a, a weed, Bert was talking about an acacia. Poor old plants. We wouldn't be breathing if it wasn't for the plants. Anyway, I'm going to bang on about plants for a bit today. Um, I'll try anyway. So rainforests, we all know them as sort of very scenic, beautiful places. They're serene, we like going there. They're cooler than everywhere else. There's waterfalls. We also sort of, if you know anything about biology, there's a lot of species there, plants and animals. And they're not just boring species, they're quite remarkable. So rainforests cover around about 7% of the land area of the earth, but they include 50% of the species. So they're, they're punching well above their, their geographic weight. They're phenomenal. They're phenomenal um, centres of biodiversity. And as I said, they're not just uh, sort of boring species. Well, I did my PhD on a boring species, I'd say, <laughs> called Brigolo. Um, sorry, Brigolo. It's pretty boring, though. Compared to a rainforest, it's really boring. Let's, let's look at what we've got here. These are all Indonesian um, rainforest species. And there's two plants and two animals in the interest of of balance. That's all I want. <laughs> I've even put a fluffy one in there too for that, for the fluffy people. Um, so here we've got the largest single flower in the world, Raffelsia. Okay, it's completely parasitic, only grows on one, it just taps into the, the, the system of one genus of vine in Indonesia. Crazy, crazy plant. Then we've got a frog. This is a, a flying frog, Wallace's flying frog, which can actually parachute from the, from the canopy of a rainforest down to the, the forest floor using the webs and other sort of films of skin. Then we've got the Titan Arum, another rather spectacular plant. This is the biggest uh, single unbranched inflorescence of any plant in the world. It's an amazing plant, just on our doorstep in Indonesia. And then of course we've got the orangutan, which we know is the sort of poster animal for conservation in Indonesia for the rainforests. Who can guess what those two flowers smell like? <laughs> Pretty rank, yeah. They'd smell like a dead cat in the sun, I reckon. But if, you, if your objective in life is to get pollinated by a fly, these guys, they know what they're doing. So these are the sorts of creatures that inhabit amazingly diverse rainforests. They're charismatic, they're beautiful, but we, we, we've not been good custodians uh, of rainforests. So, I'm going to, I feel like we've been a bit depressive tonight. I'm going to keep going on that path. Uh, and then I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. So here we have um, some, some data from the um, Food and Ag Organisation. So it's pretty reliable data on the rates of rainforest clearance from 1990 to 2005. And I'm not talking about secondary forests or, um, you know, other patches of forest that aren't that valuable. This is the old growth stuff, the primary rainforest stuff, where all of those lovely creatures that I just showed you live. So I've, got a, I've created a new um, area measurement. We're going to talk about gabbers. Who's been to the gabber to see a cricket match or an AFL match? So we know the gabber's pretty big, right? So on the y-axis here, we've got the number of gabbers cleared every year. Every year, not over the 15-year period, every year uh, for that 15-year period. So let's just have a look at Brazil. 97,000 gabbers cleared a year of primary old growth forest. A year. And Indonesia, a much smaller country, 47,000 gabbers cleared a year. Primary forest. It's not, this, it's not the leftover stuff, this is the good stuff. It's really, really amazing how, how much diversity is there and how amazing the diversity is, yet how little regard we seem to have for it. And for those of you who, who haven't been to the Gabba, that is one Gabba. 97,000 of those bad boys every year in Brazil. I was there that day too at the Gabba. It was a good day. We won. Now, then there's the carbon issue. So you guys know, um, if, you, if you went to cut a tree down and put it in the oven and dry it and get all the water out of it and weigh it, half of that would be carbon. Okay? So in every tree. Now, this is Borneo. It's a picture of Borneo um, in Indonesia and Malaysia on fire in 2002. 
and it was at the, the sort of a very busy period of forest conversion from that hyperdiverse primary rainforest that I just showed you the species from um, into monocultures of oil palm. Now, when you clear forest and then you set it aside and you allow it to dry and then you burn it, all of that carbon just goes straight back into the atmosphere. So, 15 to 20% of our global CO2 emissions um, come from forest clearing. Not just rainforest, but rainforest contributes a lot. So that dwarfs the contribution of like the transport sector. Just by clearing forests and letting the carbon go, we're releasing all of this. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. It's okay, hey man, it's all right. So the, the, the carbon issue I'm gonna talk about a little bit more, it's actually providing opportunities and ways forward. So in, in rainforest conservation, I'm gonna take the award tonight for the most boring slide. I think that's it. But anyway, it's all right, I'll talk through it. Um, so we explore, Contemporary issues in conservation, like restoration that Rich pointed to, um, avoided deforestation. So if we can pay a tropical country, or even communities, to keep the carbon in the forest, rather than as they would clear it, then we're going to conserve biodiversity, and we're going to keep the carbon where we want to keep it. Uh, and this is, this is a new way forward, uh, or it's one of the new way forward uh, for rainforest conservation. Then we can think about um, secondary rainforests. So these regrowing rainforests, they, these actively growing forests are the ones that take the atmosphere, uh, take the carbon from the atmosphere and put it back into trees. So when trees are actively growing, they're sequestering carbon. So these secondary rainforests develop or, or re-establish biodiversity in some cases fairly well, um, but they also um, restore that carbon pretty quickly in the tropics. About 80 years you can get back to above ground carbon storage of a primary forest. So the students also gain um, experience, it's really practical experience. Okay, we're talking about estimating diversity. Um, Bernd uh, picked up on that before. Estimating forest carbon, analysing diversity and carbon data. So you, there's no point going out with a tape measure and a set of calipers, writing down a bunch of numbers and then saying, righto, um, there's this much, here's a spreadsheet, look at it. I mean, you can't communicate a spreadsheet to the government, to decision makers. You need to summarise the data into numbers that, that mean something. So I know some of you are probably scared of statistics, but it's awesome. Statistics are fantastic. Statistics are one of my favourite things, other than plants. And in particular, R. And I didn't realise that it's a bit of an earner as well. It's apparently, I should be asking my boss for a pay rise because I can use R. Um, so we analyse these data. It's a really important step. And we, we also want people to think about assessing sort of different options. So do you want to protect rainforest, the primary stuff, or do we want to restore the regrowing stuff? And these are going to actually be questions in, in landscapes that, that conservation scientists are going to have to make. So at the top there, we're talking about issues in conservation science, and we're also talking about pr like contemporary strategies being used in, by conservation NGOs around the, around the tropics today. And down the bottom there, you're picking up really, really valuable skills in ecological consulting. I can tell you that, I did that for three years before I started my PhD, and this is really, really, really good stuff, especially the plant identification, it's riveting. Um, and conservation science, once again. Okay, so we get you out there, get you skilled up so that you can really, really make the difference that you all want to make because you're here on a, what is it, Thursday night. So we take the students to Lamington National Park in the Bunya Mountains. Now, these are the, probably two of my favourite places in South East Queensland. Lamington National Park is the reason why I'm standing in front of you today. That's where I caught the bug. And it was a plant bug. <laughs> And it, it's still, whenever I go there, I, I get emotional. If I hang out in the Nothophagus forests up at the top of Lamington on a misty day, holy dooly, it could, tears, dead set tears. It's really, 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 really beautiful stuff. Think about the time, how old those trees are. It just, the sense of perspective is, is very grounding. Um, so we take some nice hikes. We undertake surveys in different types of rainforests because they're not all the same. And we do some real plot-based measurements of carbon. We actually have the students out. You can see, I think that's Tamara measuring a hoop pine by the look of it. 
um, with her, her row of flagging tape behind her because she's already done them uh, or hasn't done them yet. I can't remember your system. See, these, these are the things. You've got to use flagging tape or else you measure the same tree twice. This is a really valuable skill. <laughs> <laughs> Planned identification. As I said, if you want to get into ecological consulting and you can go knock on their door and say, yeah, I can identify rainforest plants, you're going to be 10 miles ahead of the next person. I mean, it helps if you're not stupid and you can write as well. They're pretty good skills to have. <laughs> Being not stupid is a good skill. Um, and we just try and give you guys a, a good introduction into rainforest ecology as well as the sort of conservation issues. And we have a bit of fun too. I like to think we have some fun. And there's some guaranteed close encounters there. Um, so that's the, I'm tearing up just looking at that picture of another Fagus. Uh, that's the tree I was talking about. It's not quite the real thing though, is seeing a picture. I'm just, I'm controlling myself. And we've got uh, some paddy melons and of course a, a satin bowerbird. bird. And there's a whole bunch of other critters that you're guaranteed to see when you, when you come on this rainforest conservation course. So with, without further ado, I think that's it for me. Roscoe, what have we got? <laughs>